Okay. What's up, guys? It's Jay here from Mysterious Reviews. And as always, uh, you know, we are back. After a bit of a delay, we have returned for another episode of Channel Chasers. Of course, like I said, I am Jay, your normal host. And joining me as always is my friend, uh, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you feeling tonight, Brian? Hey, people. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. No, I swear I'm better. Just that was like a pre-cough voice thing. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm okay. Um, as you can tell, people, I'm not at my best. I swear it's not Corona. <laughs> um, co-worker of mine actually got it, and he went to the doctor, and they said it was bronchitis. So, I think it was- oh, dang. I think it was just that, but I'm on the. That's why I've been kind of silent on the internet lately. But I um, wanted to push through for this, so yeah, I'm ready to so talk we about. are. Yeah, so we are back with, uh, and this week's episode is on a show that I have been covering for the entirety of this first season, and uh, I've been loving every second of it, and this is one that, like, right from the jump, I told Brian, I was like, yo, this show is really good. Yeah, if we've got room, I definitely want to eventually fit this in, and, well, we ended up having room. Uh, yep, so... and uh, sorry if you heard a little bit of wrestling there. Cough drops. No, you're good. Uh, but yeah, the show, obviously, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, we are talking about Dare Me, Season 1, uh, the USA cheerleading suspense thriller drama, mm-hmm. um, which just was amazing, just straight up off the bat. Um, I saw commercials for this show while watching Mr. Robot's final season. And I was like, oh my god, this looks like Euphoria meets Pretty Little Liars. Sign me the fuck up. And I was right. <laughs> and I, I really enjoyed it. Well, who um, knew it was... Who knew it was Euphoria meets Pretty Little Liars mixed with some big little lies. Yeah, no, yeah, this has all the ingredients of a show that I would definitely enjoy. And if you are a fan of teen shows, um, then you will definitely enjoy this. Before we get officially started, though, um, I want to straight uh, first say uh, thank you to apparently our growing audience because uh, our Harley Quinn episode that we did a couple weeks back did really well. It's one of our first double digit listens episodes. Um, that's not one of our older ones. I believe our Runaways one is still doing really well, which is, again, kind of sad. But, yeah, um, this is one of our first newer episodes that hits the du- that's hit the double digits as of recording this podcast. So uh, thank you guys for listening and enjoying it. Um, apparently, a lot of you guys from Spotify are liking it, so I appreciate it. Um, nice. And hopefully you'll enjoy this episode, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, this show is... About a small town, I I want to say it's in Texas or is it in Ohio? It's Midwest. Is it Ohio, Texas? It's a small town somewhere. I don't remember what state in particular. Um, it's called Sutton Grove, and uh, you know, you would think in these small towns, like the big, like focus for most small towns is like most of the time high school football. Actually, that's not the case for this town. Cheerleading happens to be the big focus of the well, town. Well, they're like, we tried to go with our football team, but our football team sucks. Mm-hmm. So. We went with our cheerleaders. And so, like, now cheerleading is, like, a, kind of a big part of, like, the town's economy and also just kind of, like, the town's pride. And so, um, in order to push their team's journey to, you know, get further in, like, you know, state competitions and other national competitions, they decide to hire a experienced cheer coach who happens to be from the area named Colette French, played by the lovely Miss Willa Fitzgerald, who's actually playing her age this time. She's not playing a teenager, which is cool. <laughs> um, and uh, she comes to town and... um. Chaos ensues because uh, we get into some pretty 
dark territory. Um, and we'll definitely get there as we move along. But, you know, there's love, sex, romance, and murder. Mm-hmm. And, like, the whole, like, <laughs> bit... Like, from the jump, we... Like, from the narration from our main POV character, Addy, we know something huge happened at some point. So, like, the whole time, you're just like, what is this thing? What is this thing? I need to know what this Hence thing is. part of the Big Little Lies thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where I definitely got the Big Little Lies vibe. It's like, what is this thing? What did they do? I need to know what they did. This is super tense. And that's one of the things this show did so well right off the bat. Like, the tension is, like, six sees thick Mm -hmm. like for real even from the first episode like damn dude it gets intense i mean it it seems like it seems like it would these type of shows would be a slow burner but this one actually moved pretty quickly yeah what would you say what would you say brian yeah indeed it it They'll definitely have moments where it's just like they'll. It, it's weird because it'll be fast paced, but then they'll take a moment where it's just the music will stop and it'll go in slow mo and give you like a quick second of a breather, and then boom. And, and trust me, going. you'll need those. And trust me, you'll need those breathers because yo, like watching the show week to week, I had some like high blood pressure. I'm just like, oh my god. What? That's where you're gonna leave it off? Really? What's gonna happen next? Um. Also, something fun that USA did for this show is they um, made a website called SuttonGrove.wtf, which is like a gossip blog um, that is like made in the from the perspective of like someone who lives in the town. So there are a bunch of like gossipy stories around the town that like connect to the show, and it updated every week talking about different things. Um, so that was pretty interesting. and it, That was nice. kind of like a cool way to engage. I thought that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, overall, like I said, the mystery was really good. Uh, they had some twists I did not see coming, more specifically at the end. Um, well, actually, no, I saw it coming, but I didn't see it coming in that way. Um, Same. Like, I, kind, I kind of called it, but I didn't call it entirely. Uh, we'll leave it at that before we get into spoilers. But uh, yeah, um, definitely, I feel like it's worth a watch. If you like teen shows, if you like mystery, if you like suspense, <laughs> this is definitely the show for you. Um, also, if you happen to be like a cheerleader and you and you like Riverdale and you complain that Riverdale doesn't actually do actual cheerleading, they do actual cheerleading in this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's, and, you know, uh... that's always a plus. And one of our lead characters, Beth, definitely kind of has a little bit of Cheryl Blossom in her. Yeah, I would, yeah. I mean, not entirely Cheryl, because, like, I would say she, if we're going to do teen show, compar- like, character comparisons, uh, like I told Brian off mic, uh, like, I would say, like, Allison De Laurentiis mixed with Lizzie Saltzman from Legacies. Um, and, of course, Allison De Laurentiis is from Pretty Little Liars, from those of you guys who haven't seen Pretty Little Liars. Um, yeah, I get that. But yeah, no. I was just saying, like, like, the fact that that she runs the cheer squad and is so, like, <clears throat> loyal to them and is so caught up in being their leader. Yeah. We'll definitely get into that when we talk about, like, Beth's character. So, yeah, that this is, uh, you know, we did our usual, like, 10 minutes of spoiler-free stuff. Definitely go watch Dare Me if you haven't, if you've got the free time, if your school was shut down, if your, you know, place of employment was closed. Hey, you know, you got, you got some time to kill. 10 episodes. Easy binge. Mm-hmm. Also for you... College kids, it is spring break. And more than likely, your school was already shut down in advance mm-hmm. at the time of this recording. So, <laughs> you should definitely give it a watch. 
So yeah, now let's get into spoiler territory. Holy shit, man. Yep. Holy shit. Okay. So one of the one of the just a little funny thing before we get started. Um I you know, I kept making this mi- mistake over and over because the actor who plays Will, you know, one of his bigger roles before that was, of course, um, playing Matt Donovan on Vampire, The Vampire Diaries and later as Sheriff Matt Donovan on Legacies. Uh, but his name is Will on this show, and Colette's husband's name is Matt. Which, by the way, he is played by someone that you might recognize as well. Oh, really? Yeah, he did look familiar. I couldn't place it. Ezra from Imposters. Oh, shit! Okay, so he was the he was the main guy from Imposters. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, nice. Yeah, he did look super familiar. Oh, uh, that makes sense. But yeah, so like, I kept calling um, Will Matt, and I was and like, I, like everybody thought I was talking about Matt the husband, but no, I was not talking about Matt the husband. Um, it was it's kind of like a Gilmore Girl, like watching Supernatural after watching Gilmore Girls for. a many years of your life mm-hmm. and supernatural starting and you're like oh yeah there's dean it's like no that's dean i know but he's also dean mm-hmm. like you know like i know sammy now and you know he will stick into stick in my head as sammy but he's also always going to be dean to me um but yeah uh, that's another show which I don't actually think we'll be able to cover, unfortunately. But I have been keeping up. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, so, the big tension. Um, I, I want to talk first. I want to talk about like the whole Colette situation and Colette, um, Colette and Addie in particular. Like, holy shit! The amount of sexual tension between those two. Mm-hmm. And all the innuendos and shit. Like, every time she just kept talking, I was like, stop. She is, not only is she underage, she is one of your students. Don't, don't be doing this. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Y'all need boundaries. But as the show keeps going, since we're in the spoilers territory now, right, right, right. Uh, maybe Colette's words are on purpose and her actions. Oh yeah, she she's definitely manipulating and she sees that Addie has a crush and she's using that to her advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's for sure what's going on. But like and honestly, you know, I'm you know, as much as it sucks that she's manipulating this poor little girl, I'm glad she's just manipulating her and not, you know, just not following through with you know, yeah. the temptation. Because I was, there were several times, especially, like, well, legit, when, like, she was having a nervous breakdown, and, like, Addie cuddled with her in her bed. I was like, oh, man. I was literally saying out loud, no, don't do this, don't do this to me, no, no, no. Also, like, early on, like, in one of the earlier episodes, I can't remember what episode it was, but where she was at Coach's house because she was babysitting her kid. I thought when she, like, got, like, not undressed, but she, like, stripped down to her, like, bra and panties. I was like, yo, is she about to hop in Coach's bed and start, like, rubbing one out? Like, is this about to... Yeah, that's what I thought, too, honestly. <laughs> Especially because like... they kept... Cutting between that and the coach, actually. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Actually, getting uh, getting some from Will. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. Just, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm not the only you know dirty minded motherfucker on this podcast. Cause like that that was immediately where I jumped. I was like, is she really gonna do this? And I'm like, oh, okay, she just laid there. Okay, good, good, good. Um. Um, this show has a, has a very deceptive way of framing its characters. Because, like, at first, you think Addie is the one that is, like, the good character, like, the goody two-shoes, mm-hmm. like, you know, can do no wrong, mom's a cop, so she's, you know, forcibly straight-laced, but she has her little rebellious moments with Beth, where she 
drinks and parties like any other teenager does. Um, but like as time goes on, you see that actually, like, you feel more for Beth, and Beth has so much more going on, and Addie is just kind of a a whiny little bitch sometimes. Yep. Which, by the way, um, you might recognize Addie, the actress. Oh yeah. Uh, she was the female lead in Get Down. Oh yeah, yeah. She yeah she was my lead on the Get Down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And also, by the way, since we're talking about actors, real quick, Maddie's mom. Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? No. Dude, that is freaking Rita from Handmaid's Tale. What? Addie's mom is Rita? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, she, so that was um, Serena Joy's Martha, right? Yeah. Holy shit. Now that you say it, I can see it. Oh, my God. Yo. That's wild. Mm hmm. That's wild. <laughs> Damn, praise be. I'm glad you found other work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's crazy. No, but um, yeah, like, you know, I thought straight up that like, you know, easily Addie was gonna be my favorite character because like I I thought okay, Beth is clearly um just kind of this bitch who is controlling. And, yeah, you know doesn't want her to have any other friends. But then when you find out Beth's motivations and what Beth is really trying to do and how much she, like, genuinely cares for Addie, but Addie just has her head so far up her own ass. Yeah, because like, when the show first starts, you think, oh, <clears throat> going back to Pretty Little Liars, oh, this is going to be another case of Allie and Emily Emerson. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. It is not. No, no, it's Addie not. It's more is, like Allison and Arya. Addie is nothing like Emily, a sweet Emily. Yeah, and she, you know, like Brian made the Arya comparison, um, and I could totally see that. But Arya would not be nearly as stupid as Addie was, especially uh, towards the end. I mean, Look, okay. No, 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 no. If Addie, no, if Arya showed up at a crime scene and got blood on her shoes, she would have burned those bitches right off bat. Okay, true for that, but that's Arya what I'm made some stupid that's, decisions. That's why, but not as dumb as leaving evidence in her closet for her parents to find that could possibly Im- implicate her in a murder. Oh, her cop parent. Exactly, though. But... That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying Addie did not make dumb decisions, and Arya did. I'm not saying Arya didn't make dumb decisions, but Arya is smart enough to be like, okay, I'm about to do some illegal shit. Let me act, at least get rid of the evidence that I did some illegal shit. Yep. Like that's what I meant when I told. Uh, uh, I was talking to Brian off mic via text. I was like, "You'll see by episode ten why I think Addie is way dumber than Arya." I can see it. But but yeah, but yeah at least no, like at least the uh, though that um Arya did something that Addie hadn't done. And that's oh, yeah. realize the manipulative teacher and not actually I mean she's still I mean she's still married him in the end, so like no, did she I'm really learn? Addie did that Arya Arya was more stupid for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. She definitely yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, Addie does get the point there for sure. Um, but like, I think in overall stupidity, uh, she wins. Like, she beats Arya out there. Cause like, there's no way Spencer would have let Arya do something this dumb. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so like what like what I was saying before, back on that track, I like it it goes into such an interesting direction where like you think Beth is just gonna be this like mean queen bee bitch who is jealous of like the relationship developing between the coach and um you know Addie and it's gonna be like this whole secret love affair story and like maybe like you know Beth is the one who kills the person. 
But no, actually, Beth is just somebody who's, like, really lonely. And everyone in her life has abandoned her. So she's got abandonment issues and therefore doesn't trust anyone. And so she's, like, the most aware person on this entire cast. And she has no time for bullshit and is, like, easily calling everybody out because she... Like had to for she had to grow up given uh, really fast given the situation she was well, in. Well, also like, she's such a good. Fascinating also, character. we do find out that she had a very traumatic event happen to her in like episode five or so. Yeah, I think it was like five or six. Yeah, she was you know the victim, unfortunately the victim of sexual assault. Mm-hmm. But I do again. This is just a. A testament to like Beth's strength as a character, you know. A lot. I mean, not to not to shame anyone that's gone through this, but like you know, most most victims, right? They they usually kind of like freeze up and like they like they don't know what to do and like they're kind of just like they kind of just like wallow, which but is Beth reasonable. Had, yeah, it's reasonable. I'm uh, and again, I'm not trying to shame anyone who like. Has gone through that like that type of experience, but Beth had like the, the the strength and the tenacity to not just you know take this lying down. After it happened, she got video, took pictures, so that she'd have proof of what happened to her, and so that she could take that asshole down if she needed to take that asshole down. Mm-hmm. Like. That moment, like, is the, one of the first, like, major ones that really, yeah. like, made me have, like, a and lot of And I said this to Beth's Jay, character. but especially when you find out, like, all of Beth's true intentions and, like, all of her motivation and everything, you start to see that... Yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly, Beth is a little bit more Emily than fucking Addie was. Well, also, like, she, like... with the fact that she went full-on investigator mode, she reminded me of another character. Yeah, dude. Yeah, when she went all detective and she was like investigating the apartment, like asking the like the old lady and the fact that she's the snarky and also has a tragic kind of backstory involving assault and is a bit of and is a bit of an asshole. Definitely, kind of Jessica Jones. Yep, for sure. I definitely got that vibe. Um... Like she, she's just so interesting, and like when you like find out the past with her family, it's so fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, not only did her her dad cheat on her mom, like, and then like have another kid, but he moved in across the street. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck, dude? Although her mom's equally as fucked up because, you know, Beth points out several times she's like, you know, we could move, right? Like, we don't have to see them all the time. It's like, no, but then he would win, honey. We're not going to let him win. Well, also, I don't think the mom has a job and so they're living only on his. Yeah, alimony. Yep. But, and like, you know, the, the whole, like, when you, like, really understand Beth's motivations, like, some of the stuff she does and what she says makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. because everyone in her life chose something else over her her dad chose his wife and other you know other daughter over her and her mom her mom chose drugs and alcohol and money over her and now at her only like real friend her best friend her ride or die bitch chose this new coach over her and also, you at first, this show is really good at, at like showing you certain people's perspectives and not showing you the full mm-hmm. story until later on. Yeah, that's, I think um, that's what makes it so interesting. We meet, um, what's her name? Lacey? The... Tacey is Tacey. her sister. T- t- uh, yeah, Tacey, Tacey is her sister. We meet Tacey, and Tacey definitely. They're giving her kind of the whole kawaii, young cheerleader vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think she's the cute, innocent and, little uh, girl you even who see Beth picking on her like tremendously, and you're like, wow. I mean, also like 
I'm not even I'm not gonna even excuse that one because like that was fucked up. Beth almost gave this bitch hypothermia. That one was messed up, yes. I will admit there. That one was messed up. Like, but I'm but we also find yeah, out like, though, that, yeah. mm-hmm. that this girl can give it as much as she can take it. And Yep. And and also she's like sub, like like extremely shallow and fake. Yeah. She's one of she like you know, like she, when given the power by coach, it goes to her head, and like she tries to do things to outshine people just so that she can get the spotlight. And also, like you know, after the death of Sergeant Will, even though she didn't know him at all, she was one of those people that's like fake crying in front of his memorial, like oh, it's so and tragic. writing his when people like name on her face when they go to do the next yeah. game. Mm-hmm. And then, but like you got people like Michael and you know Addy and um, even you know to an extent Beth, who actually did. And know the him poor dude who found his body. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, his um his one of his other like like platoon yeah. buddies. The yeah the, uh, the the other the other marine that uh, like was under his charge. Mm-hmm. And he gave like the speech at the game. Yeah, poor him, dude. Mhm. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, Tacy, Tacy is just as fake, because like, and like, you could tell that Tacy like is like specifically after like Beth and like out to fuck with Beth. Yeah, because like, and like the moment when like Beth and her mom are having actually a nice dinner with her dad, Tacy purposely like calls her dad and like to like get him to like oh, leave and then to help her. And with then something. the next day. Waves it in front of Beth's face. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's it's a real. It, I I like that they do that. Like, they they make you believe that Beth is one way, but then when you see the whole story, it's like, oh shit, Which, oh, man. Especially, Beth... I think it was um, it might have been episode six. I think six it six ish, where we see the. The tragedy at the game at, after they find out that they made regionals, um, and mm-hmm. we see. Oh yeah, where we're, 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 yeah where Riri gets her yeah, teeth knocked out. Yeah, and that day we see it through three different people's perspectives. That was such a great mm-hmm. episode. I want to say that was like seven. Yeah, that was like six or seven. Um, and it was like you you see like the events first through Addy, then through Colette, then through Beth. Yeah, that was such a good episode. I love that mm-hmm. one. And uh, uh, this is where you actually get to see the trauma from episode six, on uh, you know where you know the whole party happened and Beth's assault, and that was really good. I love the use of like slow mo in that and how the sound editing in that episode, where like you know you could tell she was zoning out and not paying attention, so like everything around her, like the sound is just like muffled. Mm-hmm. And also, I was so thinking about good. sound real quick. Side note, like Euphoria, oh my god, the the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack is fire. Yeah, and oh also, god, yeah. and also though, it's kind of um, Euphoria was more about like suburban people, and so it had more of a poppy dance soundtrack. And this one has more of an indie because it's small town. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely more of an underground hip hop like indie rock type of like vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I I and I dug that a lot. Um, it was it was really good. But yeah, man, like seeing Beth's perspective, the only person that you know I don't like sympathize with at all is Colette. No, like, cause she's just fucked up in just in general. Like, she is what Beth will become if Beth doesn't get proper mm-hmm. support. At first, you think she's a cool character, and you think that she's a good person, but good per good yeah she you you think she's just a good person who's like made a mistake and is kind of like trapped in a bad situation that she can't get out of because like you know 
um, she's just like not happy right now. But no, she's just she's just you she just used a dude and threw him away, like it was. And nothing. then, meanwhile, while that was fading, she picked up a new toy to start messing with, which is a little girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, gross, man. Um. And, like, the even more fucked up thing is, like, Willow, man, you feel so bad for him. Because, like, especially when you found out more of his backstory and what happened to his first wife. Because in the beginning of the show, like, you know, Michael is having a conversation with him. Like, Addie's friend Michael is having a conversation with Will. And he, uh, like, offhandedly mentions his first wife. And the way they had framed it with the dialogue, it's like, oh, so she like she must have like wrote him like a dear John letter and or split. something. Yeah, like because he's like know, I don't want to talk about it's one it. of those you know classic. I was like, also, oh, it's one of those classic things where like the distance was just too much, and like you know he wouldn't open up about his trauma like that he you know dealt with in like the Middle East. So like they ended like the marriage ended up like just and fading. we also that get sucks. peppers. But then, of other things like the fact that he had a girlfriend back when they were in high school, so it's like, mm-hmm. okay, so and the, yeah, so it's like okay, so his wife might have been that girlfriend that Colette was talking about. Okay, and like maybe that's why things didn't work out la- later on when he like you know finally got out of his and small then, town and got to see the world and stuff. Just, yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, no, when you do finally Weird. find out, because you've been building it up, so I'll let you say it, but I'm just saying that as you find it out, it keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah, okay. So, you find out, you find out that, like, Sergeant Will did indeed have a wife who was his high school sweetheart, um, who he was, you know, madly in love with and proposed uh, to before he got sent overseas. And then you find out she died, right? So you find out from she a died, random drunk all, driver. You find out she that drove through a pizza joint. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, in the words of uh, the great, the late great Billy Mays, but wait, there's more. His wife was six months pregnant. Mm-hmm. But wait, with Will's but wait, kids. there's more. Yeah, there's because more. Because we find out that um, Will was overseas at the time, and no one could get in contact with him until he got home. Yeah. Fuck, mm-hmm. man. No wonder this dude is so emotionally fucked up. And so when this girl comes back into his life, who he, who, like, was kind of his, like, not necessarily his first love, but, like, somebody he was into, like, before his a, wife. A definite, before like, things got serious with his buddy. wife. Yeah, that he had a that crush they used on. To... Um, that no, he never... they actually confirmed that yeah, they, they used to do the horizontal shuffle a lot back in high school. Mm -hmm. But then he Mm -hmm. met a girl. And so, and so they stopped. And so so that's why she didn't really have to do anybody after that. And then she met her husband. Yep. They had a kid Um, and you know, the the usual stuff. And, And now we're back to the present, but now you can see how fucked up of a person Colette French is. And just, oh my god! And even dude. more, and even and more like, fucked up about her is she didn't even know any of this. No, and you don't want to. But wait, <laughs> there's more. You want to know? Even more fucked up, like that. I was just like, well, damn. When she found out about like the wife and stuff, she didn't even really react. Yeah. She was just like, eh. wow, that was the thing. Like, oh, I guess that's oh, I man, mean, that even, sucks. Like, even what? Patty, who is not the sharpest tool in the shed, 
Well, yeah, yeah, she she straight she straight up she yeah she straight up says she she's trying to she's trying to see if Colette's okay because she's she's thinking oh man she must feel so guilty and have so much remorse and then it's just like and nah. Addie's Addie didn't even know the dude yet she's freaking out about like how bad it was and how tragic he. I mean, like she 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 knew him because like one of her best friends was like a pro always like with yeah, him and but... like was recruited by him. Yeah, no, but I know what you mean. She didn't know him. She though. didn't know him like Colette knew him. Well, I would hope not. This isn't pretty no, little yeah, liars. No, like... <laughs> but yeah, it was a. Uh... But man, like it just like. The more they peel the layers back on Colette, like, I just, I didn't trust her off bat, but, like, the more they peel the layers back, she just gets more and more fucked up. Yeah, which, which kind of screwed me up, because, because, um, she looks a lot like, uh, one of the 90s Girl Next Doors, um, Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth Shue, yeah. No, like, like you know, you know, like the moral of the story here, kids, is Beth was right. <laughs> Beth was always right. And also the age-old adage: don't judge a book by its cover, even if the cover is real, real pretty. Appearances might not be as they uh, seem. But no, seriously though, seriously though, Beth was right the whole time. Well, she wasn't right about the whole ice bath <laughs> stuff. I mean, I mean, you know, but Beth was right about like about Coach French is what I mean. Like she's not, she's still, you know, she obviously has her flaws and herself is, you know, a fucked up individual. But she's nowhere near as fucked up as, um, you know, Colette. And you know, while I think that ice bath thing was messed up, you know, I also kind of think Stacy had it coming. Like, especially after fully seeing who Tacey mm-hmm. is. Tacey kind of had that coming. And she could have stopped at any time. Yeah, she could. It's not like Beth was, like, holding her down in the ice bath. She was like, you can leave whenever. Yep. But now she had to prove herself. So, no, like, you know what? Nah, like, as the, I'm not going to say the ice bath thing wasn't messed up. But also, it was fully Tacey's choice. So... Nah, like, I'm not putting that 100% on Beth. I was like, I'm gonna put eight, I, I like, I put 80% on Beth. Like, 20% of that, definitely tasty. Or maybe it's like a 50 50 thing, but like, you know what I mean? Like, point is, like, Beth was right about Colette. Addie finally realized that. But now she's not even gonna trust Beth anymore because she, she thinks Beth is just paranoid. But turns out Beth was right. Well, also, well, also, she doesn't believe Beth because Colette is like really influencing her. Like, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she poisons her mind, saying like, no, 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 Beth is just trying to control. And it's time for you, you to finally like, step and up like, and break the. And like, and like, Addie believed that, and like when she when yo when she said that shit to Beth. That hurt me. Like the look on Beth's face. Mm-hmm. Like, oh no! Indeed. <laughs> like, cause like Beth is like one of like one of the best embodiments of the bitch with a heart of gold. Cause she really does have a heart of gold. When you see like some of her fond memories and how wholesome they are, like the photo booth thing, a little kiss in the rain. I'm just like, oh. She's she's actually really sweet. Mm-hmm. Like she's such a cute character. She just has just really rough. And we find out that um that the uh, well surprisingly enough we have two aha sentimental jewelry moments with Beth. One is the necklace yep. that she wears. That belonged oh, to her that dad. That she wears all the yep. time. That not belong not belonged to her dad. Yeah, not that belonged to her dad, but her dad got it for her um in the, at uh on their last mm-hmm. family trip together as we see this family. necklace from like the beginning. 
and she's always wearing it and freaks out tremendously when she loses it. And she lost it at the party where the assault happened. Well, if you notice, so, though. Yeah. I hate to get there, but. You notice who found it? Who found it? Patty's mom. Kurtz? Because she oh, found yeah. it that's in right. the car. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Be- oh, because yeah, because. Beth stumbled in all like high no, and drunk. No, the car is where yeah, the assault happened. the car happened. panicking. Oh, it was where. Oh, I thought they. I thought the assault happened in like the hotel room. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, that made. Yeah, now that's coming together. Mm-hmm. I believe the car is where it happened. Okay. So yeah. I I thought I I thought she had like. Like, uh, went da- after it happened, she went down to the car and was, like, having a panic attack. Well, um, when Addie found her, she was passed out half in the car. So. Oh, okay. Okay, so, but you know, anyway, we'll figure that out. But, yeah, no, but oh, that's, anyway, yeah. And then the, yeah, so then that's the, the other one is... And the, yeah, the, the second piece, the uh, Hemsa bracelet... That um she made that's like a friendship bracelet that like is like a special thing between her and Addie, and then Addie goes and she gives that sh- to Coach French. Like what? Mm-hmm. And at first you think you know, and it, like I I know I'm reacting like this now, but at first you're like, I'll oh, stop being a baby. It's just a friendship bracelet. But then you realize like the significance and like. How much it means that Beth opened herself up enough to do like do that kind of gesture. And it was right before they actually kissed. But yep. So it has which, it has some other implications because you you can definitely tell that like it's uh I think I don't know I don't know if you got the vibe, Brian, but I think it might be a like an unrequited thing. Like whereas like I think I mean but not like 100% unrequited, but like, I think Addie is into girls, and she tested with Beth, but like, then she was like, no, nah, we're friends, but then Beth was like, no, nah, I kind of like this. I don't know. I could maybe see that, but also, maybe it's the romantic in me, but I'm kind of still kind of shipping them. Oh, I definitely ship them, don't get me wrong, but I also think, like, that, you know, either, like, Ad, either Addie was like, now we're just friends, or they well, were a thing, and then, like, for some reason or another, well, also stopped. going to show you, like, the like small gesture kind of smartness of the show is uh, anytime anyone brings up their friendship, anytime the newer cheerleaders, the more established ones, are like, yeah, there's more going on with them than just the fact that. Of her being the queen bee and her being her lackey. That's not the situation. It's more complicated yep. than that. And yep. they kept hinting at that yep. something happened between them. Yep. And I'm not going to lie. Like, what my hope, and, you know, this, this goes into more speculation, but my hope is that it'll eventually turn into Addie and Beth versus Colette. And I Beth. hope so, yes. Like, that's where I want it to go. I don't know if it's going to go that way, but that's where I want it to go. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now that I've kind of, like, segued into that, let's talk about that fucking ending. Yeah. That ending kind of... Okay. Well, first of... Yeah. It was, like, a lot of emotions, because you first feel mm-hmm. heartbroken for Beth, then later on, you feel heartbroken for Addie. Then you're just in complete shock. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it's a real roller coaster. Then they bring you back one. to the um, heartbroken thing. Mm hmm. So, like, the whole mystery is like trying to figure out what really happened with Sergeant Will's quote-unquote suicide. Because, like, something just felt fishy right from jump. Even Addie, 
who, you know, we've already, like, shown isn't really the most observant because her head so far mm-hmm. on her own ass. Um, no, knew something and was off there. this death um, is, like, what put Beth into full-on Jessica Jones gotta go investigate shit. Yeah, investigate, yeah. Investigator Beth mm-hmm. was the best because, like, her dad is like the I, I think he's like the DA or um, something. Isn't her dad the principal? No, her dad isn't the principal, he's like a business person because, like, Matt works for her dad. Um, I know that he's the one that's trying to get the stadium in the town, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah, anyway. Like he's a he's anyway he's a big higher up in the town, so he has all the connections and he hears all the news. And so Beth uses him first to get get some tips, like get, know where to start. And looking. she even starts to question, and, so, and then she Addy, and uh, Addy mm-hmm. dumb Addy. And also, this is where yeah, at, at, yeah, yeah. She fucked up because she got drunk and she spilled some well, things. Basically. Um, Everyone just said that it was an apparent suicide, and the rumor around town was that he shot himself. And yeah, he shot himself in the yeah. And like Beth made a joke about him shooting himself in the head or blowing his brains out. And then drunk Addy is like, "No, it was in his mouth." And she's like, "What?" And you can see that that's like when the care, her caring about Addy kicked in. She was like, "Oh shit, I need to investigate this." Yeah, it's like you know something about this. What the fuck? And then her mom and Addie's mom brings up like, you know, two sleepovers in a row. That's crazy. It feels like the old days again. It's like, yeah, you know, when was it? Oh, uh, yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, totally. Yeah, totally. And then and she's like, and then she even goes to the crime scene, interrogate it like. Pokes around to the neighbor and even addresses her attacker. Yep. And blackmails him to get more information. Mm-hmm. Or not necessarily to get more information, but to expose Colette to like make Addie see mm-hmm. the fucking truth. And like, how did Addie not like this pissed me off the most, right? Because, like, Addie, uh, like, not Addie, but Beth had so much strength to, like, look her attacker in the eye and get this information out just so she could prove to Addie she's telling the truth. But then Addie goes and just assumes, no, you're kind of loose. What you wanted to happen no, happened. Cause I think that all... that was just down to um, Beth's pride. Because Beth never once, Addie asked her multiple qu- times. Oh, I I know, and then she and she and she said, and I know she denied it, but I mean, like, also, like, Addie knows Beth better than anybody. She should have known Beth. Yeah, was but she was me. also distracted by her crush. So, yeah, again, mm-hmm. head up her ass. But, but yeah, and. He was telling her something that she didn't want to hear, so she definitely took it. Mm -hmm. But and then the Hemsa bracelet was found, Mm -hmm. and I I think that's the um, I think that's like the um, uh, like that was the thing that like uh, I think either like no I think uh, not Addy but Beth I think did Beth find Uh, the crime scene? I. Don't know. I don't think. I know she said it was found at the crime scene. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, did she find it at the crime? I, I remember she like picked something uh, off of the carpet. Maybe she did. I don't. I don't exactly remember. Um. Yeah, because I think that would make sense, and this could help, like, in the whole team, Addy and yeah, Team Beth versus. And- like Colette and but, that. yeah, so, like, so all of this is building, and then we have yeah. So she, yeah, so she, yeah, and so like um, what you call it? Uh, Beth, uh, Beth asks Addie about like the the Hemsa bracelet. Like, where's your Hemsa bracelet? And she goes, you know, why are you freaking out about it? Why are you freaking out about it? Um, and then it's just like because 
It was found at the crime scene. And you and I both know and that I, she doesn't and, give and, a and, shit about you and will throw you under the bus. And and that's why I think Beth is the one that found it, because I feel like if that yeah. shit was found, like Indeed. like Addy like they would have directly went oh, to yeah, Addie. True. Especially true. Consi- considering but her mom. In a, I mean you know, like showing like the cinematography of this show. I love the mm-hmm. moment where where Addie confronts Colette. Oh yeah, where she's standing outside, she's texting her, and, and there's just goes back and silence forth. and music. Yeah, the music is so just good. Slow music, and then them just looking at each other through a glass window, not saying anything, but te- her texting her. Yeah, face mm-hmm. and the facial acting from both actresses. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god. And then when, like, when Addie texts about the Hempstead bracelet, she starts to, Colette starts to freak the fuck out. And then this is when the husband shows up. He goes, why are you tearing up our fucking And then she looks at him and says. Where is it? Yeah, she goes, the Hempstead bracelet, where is it? Where is it? She goes, the little friendship bracelet thing that that Addie gave you? Yeah, I don't know why. And then she just turns to him and looks at him and says. Because it was uh, because it was in Will's hotel room the night we were there. Dun dun dun. Because I knew fuck. something was up with him on that business trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so like me and me and Elizabeth, we watch we watched the show together week to week, and we were we were saying the whole time when like when she was making those phone calls. So I'm like, it's awfully convenient that he's out of town at this exact mm-hmm. moment. And I thought maybe he did it on his own. Yeah. So my see this 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 was my half theory, right? I thought that he had gone to confront Will. And he killed him, and then Colette helped him hide the body. But now, the way they, the way she said we were there, I think they both planned well, to kill him, and she used herself I'm, as bait. And I have a theory. All right, we're in. Um, in case you guys didn't know, we are in speculation mode now that we've like done a summary. Because like, you mentioned that, and I portion. actually have a theory. Because there was a particular moment that really hit hit in the finale okay. when the parents were watching mm-hmm. the game, and Beth's dad says, "We will do anything to protect our kids," and even. And make up for the things that we did to them. So that makes me think, is there maybe a chance that the daughter was Will's? Oh, shit. Oh, shit, because they did hook up in high school. Oh, man. That just got even juicier. Because they were talking about all the stuff that they do to protect oh, their man. kids. Oh, damn, dude. I think you just cracked the case open. That's a solid one. I like that a lot. That's super juicy. And it would be even more fucked up, considering yeah, his past. Exactly. And why he'd go, like, over mm-hmm. the top. And that would explain his reaction, like the the like the day he saw like the family mm-hmm. eating breakfast with the baby, like you know that family. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's great! Oh yeah, now I'm gonna be a little upset if that doesn't happen. I don't know if it makes sense timeline wise because I think they were out of town. Yeah. Yeah, they might have been out of town, so it might not. It might not line up. I feel but, like maybe you know, something it might involving the daughter, because there's a reason why they showed that scene. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was between him and the and uh, 
what's her face's mom? Oh, uh, the girl who got kicked mm-hmm. in the face. Riri's mom. Yeah, Riri's mom. Riri's Which, mom. Again, another gray area character. Yeah, um, I, I, I like that she was the like the smoking gun to best investigation because she was like, yeah, so my dentist uh, got called in for like helping the examination. Like they, they say there was gunshot, re- like there was gunshot residue on his mouth. Well, it seems so like they, I don't know problem, why they'd want a right? dentist. And his teeth are a tooth doctor for this, and just Beth being smart as she is, she put it together. Yep. Because Ri- mm-hmm. Riri, so yeah, I- she's just such a small side character, but I do kind of like her absent-mindedness. She... I, yeah, her, per- it- her personality is fun, and I do like that, like, she wanted to be friends with Addie, but, like, Beth was so protective at first that she didn't really let her in until, like, Riri became I know that one of the we haven't top seen much of her yet, but you go back to PLL. You know who Riri kind of reminds me a little bit of? Hannah. Oh yeah, who? I could see that. I could totally see that. She definitely has that like airhead mm-hmm. Hannah type line. lovable airhead. Um, yep, yep, yep. Um. But yeah, hopefully this show gets a season two. Mm-hmm. It needs a season two. You can't just blue ball me like Honestly, that. this is a show that, uh, that like Big Little Lies, I think I'd be happy if it only had two seasons, but it still needs that second season. Yeah. Like, I might not have been like entirely satisfied with the ending of Big Little Lies, but it definitely needed mm-hmm. that second season. But, like, this show, this and Nancy Drew have, like, been my source of teen mystery all TV season, and neither failed to disappoint mm-hmm. me, or, like, neither failed to impress me. Like, which is why I like your twist, because that seems very Nancy Drew, without spoiling Yeah, Nancy also, Drew. speaking about, like, shows like this, um, it was recently announced that, um, a an underrated one season show that I like is coming back as like a teen show. And that is good Christian bitches. Oh yeah. They're doing a reboot of good Christian bitches. But yeah, I I I love that show. I would, I think it's meant to be on the CW or something. It it is gonna be on the CW because it was originally on. Um, I was originally on the so CW. So I I doubt it will be. Uh, I doubt it will be um, as adult, but I do kind of hope that it's kind of like a Southern Fried version of Dare Me and Euphoria. I could totally see that. Uh, I I just I just need them to bring Christian Chenoweth mm-hmm. back in somehow. Uh, but yeah, no, like all in all, the show was fantastic. Totally recommend it. It was one of those ones that had me on the edge of my seat every single Sunday. It, it's what made me look forward to Sunday. It's one of the things that made me look forward to Sunday and, nights. And, and I would have covered it if not for the fact that Sundays were so jam packed, and that it was mm-hmm. like it aired late. And it, I it was a ten o'clock show early in the mornings. On Mondays, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I'm of course in typical me fashion, marathoned it, but I really liked it, and it's very smart in its um execution and cinematography. Yeah, like the yeah, and the mystery element is really well done. It's not like it's not super easy to figure out, like Big, Big Little Lies was. Like I feel like well, Big Little Lies I is pretty still, obvious. I still love that though, because uh, Jay started watching Big Little Lies and watched through it, and was like, "You have to watch shit. We have to do a show on it." Back in our well, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't uh, started. Yeah, I was watching and... it a second time. Well, that's what I meant. And you were like, "You need yeah, we need to talk about this, so you need to watch it." And so I started marathoning it in like episode two. I called one of the big twists. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, the big twist, because I was, because, you know, when I, fir- when I first watched it, like, that was what I did not see coming, like, and then it's just like, and it's just like, well, shit! Yeah, Jay couldn't even hold it in, he was like, well, damn, you called it! <laughs> yep, um, but, yeah, they're like, uh, so, you know, as you can see, solving mysteries is one of our like favorite uh, favorite things. I mean, Pretty Little Liars was one of our favorite shows to talk about, even though we only did one and, show on it. Well, technically, uh, um, um, they're they're. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we yeah yeah we were we were on the before front, uh, channel the front chase line was, was even a thing for like a couple. Of... Yeah, yeah, true, true. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd say one and a half, but um, but yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, we were big into Pretty Little Lies, and uh, I mean, <laughs> just combined both of them. Yeah, you you combined it. Yeah, Pretty Little Liars and yeah. Euphoria is one of our favorite shows. Just yeah, in teen. Although we'll have to a wait teen 20... show, which is well, very real. Like um, like Dare Me, because Dare Me is very real. Like you see it and. One of the first oh, yeah, scenes that you see are teenagers drinking and driving. Like, like so, um, like I feel like Dare Me is mm-hmm. very small town real, whereas like Euphoria is very yeah, rich like kid real. That was something that I guess it's just my innocent brain didn't put together, but makes total sense that teenagers would hide their alcohol in their hydro flask. I mean, yeah. The, the, which is why you're not allowed to bring a, a lot of times, unless like unless like it's for during practice or whatever. You're not actually allowed to bring those to school now, because um, they're like you can't see through them. So mm-hmm. like te- you can easily hide alcohol in them. Mm-hmm. Now, unless in, unless you're one of those super big brains who are like, you know gets a regular water bottle and just decides to drink vodka and like it just you know it looks like water i'm not encouraging this kid um the only time that i've actually seen that done in a piece of media was the nick sparks movie where the guy was a straight up alcoholic asshole so don't do that yeah just don't do it uh, but yeah, Dare Me's mm-hmm. great. Uh, highly recommend it. So yeah, um, we have now reached that special time of the night where we uh, get to plug and tell you guys what we have done and what we are going to be doing on our channels. Of course, me on Vlair, um, you know, uh, just search me up on Vlair.tv, Mr. J's Reviews, and Brian on both Vlair and YouTube. Even though I've been very silent on both because of this sickness. Um. Yep. So, um, Brian, <laughs> yours should be a well, lot quicker I haven't than done Jack shit and like. Yeah, you haven't. Yeah, you haven't done anything. So really, all you got to do is what's um, coming up. I will test to see how my voice is because, as you can see, it's still kind of off. Even though I'm mainlining mm-hmm. cough drops right now. Um. If it's up to it, I will cover tomorrow's shows, um, which are uh, what tomorrow's show. Sorry, Batwoman, Bat, yeah, Batwoman and Supergirl, just or Supergirl. Are you just doing Supergirl. Batwoman I know, had a really but... great episode last week, though. Like, mm. it, that's honestly, it was a huge turnaround. It might be a wait and see basis thing. Um. Yeah, because I, I don't know, like, uh, maybe I'm turning into the optimist. I will that was openly a huge admit that, yes, I was like, it was. Okay. But also, we've had episodes before where it's, oh, this episode's good. Then, boom, next episode. No, but, like, I, well, I, I will agree with you there, but, like, those episodes were just okay. That one was actually great but and consistent. Anyway, gotta, like, um... The trailer also has me a little scared. Um, yeah. Also, that twist with Mouse, I won't say anything, but... Um, yep, yep. 
Supergirl, it just Supergirl so, seems yeah, like it'll um, be cool. Um, it's a trans yes. violence episode. It, it's going to be a dreamer centric episode. Yeah, because you know everybody in the Arrowverse has to go psycho vigilante mm-hmm. at least once, and she is trans, so. Uh... It it is something that she has to deal I with. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for her character. Because, mm-hmm. and she did like publicly mm-hmm. come out as trans, like as a superhero. Yeah, and with uh, Tara. So there are uh, in our real life, there are people who are still a holes about it. So I imagine. I just, I, I just, I just really hope that like this episode, since it's like. More, uh, more, um, Nia centric that we get less Lena mm-hmm. bullshit because that's what's really turned mm-hmm. me off of Supergirl is this like Lena plot. That's why I've decided to just cover it in. I'm, I'm still watching it, but I'm gonna cover it in season format. And also, Flash isn't doing too well, even though I really like the Flash, so I'm gonna do that in season format also. All right, but anyway, um, then Monday, new show. Well, returning. Roswell. Oh, yeah, Crosswell. You, d- you didn't say it correctly. Crosswell. You gotta say it like Crossa. Because that's, that's how Liz talks, even though she speaks perfectly fine with no accent. Except when she says, you know, how do you know about my it's sister the- Crossa? Like, it's the Veronica. It's the, yeah, it's the Miha syndrome. Like you got, like come on, man. But um, Crosswell. Then, then if that wasn't sad enough, Tuesday we've got Legends, which uh, yep. goodbye, Ray. Yeah, Laura. which that still pisses me off because uh, for those of you who might not know. That was neither Brandon nor Courtney's decision. Really? They just kicked her they, they just kicked decision. them off. A producer thought their story what? was over. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. That's dumb. That's real dumb. There's plenty of stuff that they could have done. But they have Dang. said that they are um they are leaving it so that they can come back. And um, also, they are going out on a bang because Shakespearean superheroes. Which is going to be fucking awesome. God, mm-hmm. I love that show so and much. And we got Wednesday. Which is Nancy following up a amazing holy shit That twist. did not see coming. Nobody did. <laughs> like, you know, like it was funny. We, we we were watching it, and we're like, "Oh, that was a nice twist." But wait, it's not over. It, yet. it was like, "Oh, that's a nice twist." But wait a minute. There's still and like there's twenty still minutes left. Like, four, at least four more episodes left in the season. So we're like, yep. "What?" And then, oh shit! And then uh, it's like we were like, "What? What's going to happen?" And then, then we're like, "What?" <laughs> then I don't, oh, I don't shit, cover it man. anymore. But like, Wednesdays also has Riverdale, which uh, yeah. last episode, Hedwig, I guess. <laughs> Hedwig, I, I guess. I still have yet to see know. last week's episode. Honestly, I mean, that's kind of. Interesting. I just realized. I, you honestly didn't miss much. Like, literally, like, not really that much happened. At the end of the episode, they promised to have a normal year, but I, that's not gonna happen, you guys. I know this show. It's not gonna happen. Well, I, I mean, and happen. also, it's not two major happen. parents are confirmed not to be series regulars next season. Not even series regulars. They're just straight yep. up departing from the so, show. So, uh... That's going to be interesting. Well, 
hopefully that hopefully they can just fast forward to the college years and they're just coming back to Riverdale. Like I, I really don't need to see college years. No one likes the college years. No. Ask anyone who watched ask anyone who watched the grassy or anyone who watched Glee. Nobody gives a shit about your college yep. years. It's a high school show. Leave it in high yep. school. And you want to follow some of the seniors off? That's cool. Have them be like teachers and mentors and stuff. Yeah. But nobody well, gives a shit about your college years. Pretty Little Liars completely skipped over it. So like, yeah, let's, let's just do, do that. That. Let's... that would be good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, and then Thursdays is Katie Keen, which is well, I was going to say Legacies. Katie Keen is really yeah, good, Keen. and it's getting interesting with some actual. Like plot twists and yeah, not necessarily a mystery, but you know something like something for and a to discover like plot twist involving mentors, which I think is really cool. Um, it reminds me of Pose, even though I couldn't really get into that. Indeed, show. but um, then we've got Legacies, which oh. New the new yo last week's episode was the best episode ever. <laughs> um, straight up, as as a noir fanboy and as anyone as a person who just loves any time one of his favorite shows does a noir themed episode. Um, like, Although Jay did bring this ever. up to me off camera. Um, what are they gonna do with faculty now? Yeah, it's just Rick. <laughs> Like, you know, slight spoiler, it's just Rick now. <laughs> the fuck? He can't run a whole school by himself. He could barely be headmaster by himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to start drinking mm-hmm. again, damn it. <laughs> and honestly, I wouldn't um, blame him. But anyways, Friday, yeah, Legacy is great. Hopefully I can get to it, Owl House. All of, yep, last all of these, by awesome. the way... Are just gonna gonna be a hope by basis because of my voice, and I can tell you that the only one that for sure that I'm gonna try to push through, even though I'm not feeling great, is even if my voice goes crappy, I'm still gonna try to push through for Roswell. But um, everything nice. else is just a, like case by case basis on whether or not my voice is back. Mm-hmm. But that leads us to Saturday. All right. So this week, uh, we are uh, or next week we are doing uh, like a I, I call the switch last minute because like. I was watching on my block, but I also wanted to finish Castlevania, so I ended up finishing Castlevania, because I only had, like, two more episodes left, and I watched it, and I was like, holy shit, this is some Game of Thrones level stuff. Like, this season was not the best, but how it set things up, Castlevania is going to be huge moving forward. Like, this show could go for at least seven seasons. Seven or eight. And like, I didn't hear. Easily. I didn't like uh, see anything spoilery, but I did hear that it kind of sets up a cinematic universe. Not well, not cinematic, a cinematic but, universe, because like, Castle. It's more like it sets up a multiverse, because Castlevania itself operates yeah. on like a, on multiverse theory. Uh, if you like are familiar with the franchise, and they set that all of that up. And it's going to be awesome. And they're going to do, like, it seems like they really are going to go full on into the multi-generational thing. And so, like, I'm just, we, we got to do this. Like, it, it's that good, man. Like, I skipped out on Hunters, which I believe is the best show of 2020 so far. Castlevania well, is um, too. And then, uh, well, uh, but we aren't completely getting rid of On My Block because it's been getting... Season oh, yeah, three yeah, has been that, getting rave be reviews. After. Like I don't think you've gotten to the end yet, but 
I've heard that it's like game changer. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, it's really good. I'm not. I'm not denying that it's not still great. But Castlevania had me fucking shook. And again, it's not even because it was like the best season ever. It's just because there are so many possibilities that are opened up. I still think uh, so far season two is the best season, but season three has so much did so much in terms of character development, world building, and plot potential. There's so much more to talk about. Like, oh my god, dude, I'm so excited. Like, if my little sales pitch and my, like, just the hype in my voice didn't sell it to you, like, I, I'm really ready to talk about this fucking show. Um, but, yeah, moving on to, like, what's coming up for me. Uh, so, um, I'm, um, I, mo- um, I did most of my weekly stuff, except for I skipped out on the weekend stuff. Uh, I will hopefully get those Owl House and uh, Steven Universe videos up tomorrow. Um, and then Monday, of course, Crosswell is back. So I'm going to do Crosswell um, along with the, uh, um, the Good Doctor. And then I'm going on Tuesday, uh, I'm going to do This Is Us. Uh, Wednesday, Nancy, Thursday, Legacies, Katie Keen, and again, Friday, Owl House, Steven Universe. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you guys. We hope you enjoyed our Dare Me discussion. Hopefully you'll get to watch Dare Me for yourselves if you hadn't already. Although, I don't know why, if you hadn't watched it, why you sat through 76 minutes of a podcast. Yeah. But if you did, thank, thank you. you. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys next time where we get to talk about the Lord of Darkness himself Vlad Tepes III Count Dracula uh, stay tuned for Peace. that but until next time <laughs>